So welcome back to Aliens. This is Navin Reddy from Periscope Learning Center. In this video, we'll talk about why string is immutable and how exactly we can benefit from that. Now, when we talk about mutability, uh, there, there's, there's one person who I admire a lot, and he says, uh, mutability is a crime, and I, we all are criminals, right? We always change, uh, change those data, right? So when you say mutation, it means change, right? So let's say if you have an object and you want to change the values, then you are doing mutation. So we need to make sure that we are doing something which will not mutate it. So there are certain things. If you want to increase the performance of your system, make it immutable, right? So make your objects as immutable so that it will increase the performance. So string are the, strings are immutable because we want to increase the performance, right? And yeah, let's see how to, how to do that. So what happens is, normally we write this statement which is string uh, str equal to, let's say, if I write my name, which is Naveen, okay, make sure it is I, okay? Uh, people normally search me with N-A-V-E-E-N, -E -E it's not that, it's N-A-V-I-N, okay? So it's N-A-V-I-N ready, don't use double E there. Now, let's say we have this name, which is string str equal to Naveen. Now, in this, we have, uh, so this that's a string, right? So what happens is, inside your heap memory, uh, we have something called as, uh, oh, not this small, let me, let me take a big area. So inside your heap memory, you'll be having something called as, uh, what? It is called as string pool. So inside your heap memory, you'll be having something called string pool. So now if I say string str equal to Naveen, okay, so this will go inside this and there will be a variable, there will be a value called as Naveen, okay? And now, this Naveen will have a unique address. Let's name it as 101. Now, what will happen if I create a new variable as string str1 equal to Naveen? Okay, the same, the same object now, okay? So we have the same value, but we have str1. So what will happen in this? It will not create new object. Now, inside your string pool, since we already have Naveen, it will not create new object, both of this, will refer to the same object, right? So there will be a stack memory, right? Normally what, we ha what happens is, whenever you create an object, you use two memories. One, you use a stack memory, right? And then you use the heap memory. So objects are normally created inside heap memory. And the reference, which is str and str1, which are variables, right? Which, which will be inside your stack memory. And somewhere here, you mentioned that this is str, right? And you will mention 101. And since str1, is also 101. So now we have two variables which are pointing to the same object. Now what if, if I take str, okay, this is the first variable, and if I say str equal to ready, if I change this, now what will happen? Will it change the existing name? Of course not, right? Because if str is changing to ready, if I change this one to ready, 101, that means it will, it will also affect str1, right? So that's, that should not be the case, right? That's why this will create a new object here, and the value of that will be ready, and let's say this is 103. Now 101 will be replaced by 103. That means you are changing the value of the reference, but you are not changing the actual value. And that is what makes strings as immutable. You cannot change the value. Okay? So once you have defined the string, you cannot change it. So this is the object which you are not changing. You are just creating new object. So every time you change the value of str, you are actually changing the address, but you are not, you are actually creating the new object, but you are not changing the existing value. Okay? And that's why strings are immutable. But then question arise, we have one more way of creating string, right? We can say, uh, string s1 equal to new string and in bracket you can pass Naveen, right? Even this, you can do this, right? Then you will think, whenever you use new keyword, that means it will not use heap memory or it will not use string pool memory, right? It will create a new object here and let's say the address is 201, okay? So because you are saying new, so new will not take the, uh, the memory from string pool. It will use the memory of heap. Here we are not using any new keyword, that's why we are using string pool, right? So this, since we are using new, it will use the object here, which is the, uh, inside heap memory will be having an object, and that object will have Naveen. But hold on, that's not the case. 
every time you say Naveen, it will actually use the memory of string pool. Okay, that's, that's the dependencies here. So this Naveen will be also coming from this Naveen here. So of course you are using, you are using a string pool memory indirectly. Okay, so this Naveen will be coming from string pool. So this uh, str here will have a memory address which is 101. So that's the, that's the problem with all this stuff. So even if you are saying Naveen, that will use a string pool memory. But then question arises, how to make it mutable? And so can we make string mutable? Yes, we have two ways of doing it. The one way is using string buffer, and the other way is using string builder. Of course, we, uh, we have the uh, practical implementation of those in, the, uh, in this series. So this is the theory of why string is immutable. Okay, it, uh, so first it, it increases the performance of the system. Second, every time you, you create a variable, because two, two reference can share the same object, right? Uh, this is actually called as flyweight pattern. So in design patterns, we have a concept of flyweight, which means if possible, we can actually reuse the objects. I mean, two reference are using the same object. So that's about why string is immutable. If you have any more questions, you can comment in the comment section. Uh, just I have just one announcement. We are the website is up and up and running. You can actually give test on website on my website now, which is telisco.com. Uh, you can also download the Android app, which is there on the Play Store now. Uh, you can search for you can go to Play Store and search for Telisco app and download it. Try to I mean use it. There there might be some bugs. Uh, report me if you if you find any bugs so that we can resolve it. And that's it. Thanks for watching and do subscribe for, for the videos.